Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Binge Battle. On this episode, we're talking Lost. Remember the show that was, some people thought it was just another Survivor. Then they said, oh, no, 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 wait, this is something totally different and interesting and strange. And it was our introduction to the wonderful mystery box of J.J. Abrams. The show ran for six seasons, culminating in a very controversial final season and final episode, which we're about to celebrate the 10th anniversary of May 23rd, 2010. Uh, we were all so young. It's been a decade since we got to argue about Lost. And now that we've had some time to think, time to reflect, we're going to get into all of the goodness that is Lost and all the controversies that that entails here on Binge Battle. My name is Mark Ellis. I'm just going to be the host, the referee for this madness. Our two contestants today, not only are they two of my dear friends, they're two Monster Lost fans as their memorabilia and a lot of the stuff that they wear day in and day out will attest to. Introducing first is your challenger today. He is not only a great human being, you can catch him on a number of different shows, podcasts that he'll tell you about. He is also a staple at every comic book convention that you will go to. So unfortunately, we're waiting for those to open back up. But in the meantime, we have him virtually. And that is the one, the only Valley Folk Mr. himself, Steve Zaragoza. How you doing, buddy? What's up? Thanks for having me. This is very exciting. Um, Steve, we're very excited to have you. Uh, how has your, your quarantine been? How are you staying sane, my friend? Um, Animal Crossing and um, marijuana. <laughs> hey, it's legal out here in California, folks, so you save those comments for another day. Speaking of marijuana, no, speaking of being a fan <laughs> of vlogs, I am happy to introduce your returning champion. She boldly went up against... One of the best that I've ever seen, Hal Rudnick, and defeated Hal Rudnick when it came to Breaking Bad. That is the host of the Rockstar, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Miss Roxy Stryer. Roxy, how are we feeling today? I'm feeling really good right now. Uh, and I, I do love that in our minds during quarantine, somehow Lon and Hal have morphed into the same human. They both was it Lon I, I mean, Harris? That's it right. Was, you defeated you know, Lon Harris. I understand it's been a quite the quarantine. And if you <laughs> want to say I defeated Hal, then I defeated Hal also. I'll take that uh, another notch on my belt. But you know yeah, what? I'm ready I for don't this blame one. myself. I blame the Dharma Initiative for doing yes. some sort of weird tomfoolery with my head and what I'm remembering versus what actually happened in the same way that Ken Burns would be accusing The Last Dance of fudging some numbers and fudging some facts. But look, we're not here to talk about The Last Dance. If you tuned in on time, then you maybe won a Fandango Now promo code courtesy of The Last Dance or one of our other trivia questions. But that is all preamble. The binge battle. So what we do here on this show is we have four rounds, and it is going to be Roxy, not versus Lon. It's actually going to be Roxy versus Steve. So maybe our scoreboard keeper is enjoying some of the grass that Steve Zaragoza has deep in the valley. With all that being said, it's four rounds, and each round, of course, point. The way that everybody out there votes for who they like better is simple. Roxy Stryer, if you like her argument, you like what she has to say about a particular round or character or moment better then you click the like button. If you think Steve has the more firm argument, then you click the heart. You're voting with your thumbs. You're voting with your hearts. Both competitors are going to do a great job. I assure you of that, but we can only have one winner. If we're tied at the end of four rounds, then we will go to a sudden death overtime round. Throughout the duration of the match, we want to hear from you. So comment, chime in along with us as though you were arguing amongst yourselves. Let us know what you think about each category. And then once I said... Uh, it's time for the final answers. Please chime in with your likes or with your hearts and let us know if it's Roxy or Steve in your eyes. All right, we're about to get going. Each competitor is going to have about a minute to open their argument. I'll give you about a 30-second rebuttal, and then you're each going to have about a 10-second closer to drop the mic on the argument and leave it to the audience to decide. So, Steve Zaragoza, are you ready? Yes, sir, I'm ready. And Roxy Stryer, the returning champion. You pumped and ready to go? Born that way, baby. And then we're off and running with your first round here today in Lost. It's simple. Throughout the six seasons, who or what was the best character? The challenger, Steve Zaragoza, is going to go first. You got about a minute at your ready, sir. Uh, without a doubt, I think Locke 
is the greatest character on the television show Lost. And the reason why is because every single episode with Locke in it, where he was the focus, because, you know, they had, like, Jack-centric, Locke-centric, Kate-centric. Whenever it was a Locke-centric episode, it was the most compelling. It was the most sci-fi angled oh that foot that shot of him in the coffin it hurts but it's just everything is compelling about the lock episode, especially since it's episode four where you learn about lock in a really big way and that's when I'm like okay i'm on board lock is just incredible and look there's a lot of great characters in the show but lock's arc is tragic and entertaining and mysterious and and just really cool, I think. I think he had the most interesting background, backstory of any of the characters. All right, Steve. Well, you already have a lot of commenters agreeing with you. Zubair chimes in and says, Locke, because he had an amazing backstory, like you pointed out, and is the most resourceful character. And then one of my favorite comments already, Roxy, is that um, nobody can pick who their favorite character is because they fell in love with so many of them and then they got killed off. So it's tough to pick <laughs> who you actually want to glom onto because you don't know if they're going to be around for the next season or even the next episode. Roxy, how do you counter Steve Zaragoza with his lock pick? Listen, with an ensemble cast like this, there's a lot of incredible characters to choose from. And Steve could have picked any of them. He, he could have picked Charlie, could have picked Desmond, could have picked Jack, could have picked Sawyer, all incredible characters. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Binge Battle on a different stream. Apparently what happened is the smoke monster. Remember the smoke monster from Lost where it would come in at random times, then it leaves and you're like, what the hell was that? I thought I was watching a show about people surviving a plane crash. I thought this was like a Tom Hanks in a Wilson situation. And then I see a smoke monster that got into the wires and the ethernet around the offices here at Fandango and Rotten Tomatoes. But luckily, we have rescued the stream, and we are now ready to continue our binge battle momentarily. Binge if you're tuning in, I want to give you all a little bit of time to catch up, to get over to the news stream, and to get commenting once again. Because, look, I got to tell you, I've hosted a number of these things now. Uh, I've hosted a lot of virtual things in my life. The comments on this particular one, y'all seemed ready to talk about Lost. Y'all seemed like we haven't gotten the outlet to vent or praise or just discuss everything that went into the six seasons of this show until now. So on its 10th anniversary, almost here, of the season finale and the series finale on May 23rd, 2010, we want to give you all that opportunity. So along with both Roxy and Steve, my name is Mark, and I want to welcome you all to our new stream where you can comment at your heart's content. But I also want to remind you all that you are in control of which one of our competitors wins each round and ultimately who's going to win today's lost binge battle. If you think that Roxy Stryer had the better argument overall in a particular round, you just like her choice better, then click the like. Click that thumbs up. If you think Steve Zaragoza was the better option in a particular round or you just have fallen in love with his quarantine beard, click the heart for Steve. That's how you're voting and then I'll tabulate it in my algorithmic head and we'll announce the winner of each round as we get there. Now, if you were watching on the previous stream we had, then you saw that we just started round number one when the smoke monster attacked. So Steve Zaragoza, a very nice opening salvo for the new challenger defending Locke as his favorite character. The question was best character. Steve argued Locke and he argued him very well, mentioning the backstory that he had, the character arc, the growth and the journey that, that character goes on. And then through flashbacks, we get to see so much more of Locke. And then I turn it over to our returning champion, Roxy Stryer, she was ready to go. She was shooting barbs like she was Legolas in the Two Towers at Steve's argument. And then we're about to find out which character Roxy Stryer took. So, Roxy, if you can just kind of reset mentally and emotionally in your head, can you now physically give us your opening minute for the best character in Lost history? Absolutely, because those few minutes we had for me to really think about this I have remembered how frustrating Steve's pick really is because of his character choice uh, being John Locke. I will get to that. But first, I want to build up the person I am picking, who is absolutely the best character on the show Lost, which is hard to do, by the way, because it's such an incredible ensemble. And that is Kate. Kate is the best character because she's unlike any we had ever seen before. Yes, there has been love triangles on shows previously, but that wasn't the 
but was at the center of her character. It didn't define who she was, her love interest or anything of that sort. We saw an incredible backstory from her where she ended up murdering her father so that she could save and protect her mother and herself because he was so incredibly abusive. And that is why she had to go on the run. Um, we, when we meet her, we know uh, eventually that she had been the one in handcuffs, uh, that she had been cuffed together. And you're trying to piece together why. What did she do? Because she seems to have such a genuine soul. She's the one who first sews up Jack. She's the one who sees in Sawyer that he could be good. And she was never judgy of anybody. She never thought she was better than. She listened to everybody and decided to go on the journeys to help her friends and try to get them off the island. She wasn't pretentious. She wasn't annoying. She was all around a pretty kick butt female character, which again, at that point was not something we were seeing on TV often. Uh, those arms dough, that was ripped city. And uh, yeah, because of all of that and more, Kate was the character. Uh, it's why Evangeline Lilly has gone on to have quite the unbelievable career afterwards. All right. Well, Roxy Stryer, a nice counterpunch to Steve Zaragoza's opening salvo there. I will agree with Roxy and that, yeah, Kate definitely found the right tree to do pull-ups on because oh, she yeah. is indeed Jack throughout the sixth season. <laughs> but now we're going to go back to Steve Zaragoza. Before we do that, I do want to thank everybody for finding the new stream. We're getting so many comments that are like, welcome back, that are telling us that uh, Callie Nichols says, yay, glad you're back. James Halleck assures me, says, I'm here, Mark. Don't worry. So thanks to everybody tuning back in for our new stream. And with that, now that we have eight and lock on the playing field, Steve, we go back to you for your rebuttal. You got about 30 seconds. Have at it, sir. Kate's awful. Uh, Kate, Kate, it takes Kate so long before she like is likable at all. And it's because of Aaron, the baby that um, she, uh, the Claire's baby that she has to watch. And she finally becomes a less selfish person before that. She's so selfish. She lies to everybody. She's deceiving. She's she's two timing. She's basically using Jack because I mean she's in love with Sawyer the whole time. Let's be honest about that. But she's stringing Jack along because she knows Jack is the leader and she could get the most out of being like kind of leading Jack on. And uh, you know I just think Kate is uh, she's a, she's. She ends up being a great character. I love Evangeline Lilly, but Kate is just like the worst for a very long time. Wow. And I know a lot of people feel the same way about Locke, but just the fact that Terry O'Quinn was able to pull off dual roles on the series perfectly makes him stand light years above the rest. Mark, right, can I Rob, go at him? 30 seconds. Have at it. Listen. Kate is flawed, absolutely. What makes great characters? People who are flawed. She is conflicted who to go with, and we see that many times, but ultimately with Jack, we know that is her OTP, and that's what's important. Let's talk about Locke for a second, who, by the way, does not listen or care what anybody thinks on the show. He is the one who is always right. He's holier than thou, coming in on his high horse. He's the one who blows up the hatch when Hurley's screaming, don't do it, the numbers, the numbers. Uh, he... Put, points a gun at people multiple times, including uh, Jack, uh, threatens to kill everybody, actually does kill some people, becomes the leader of the others, is not on our team for most of the time, is the most judgy, arrogant person. You want to talk about deceiving? He lies the entire show. Nobody knows what's going on with him. Why do you have knives on the plane? Why do you have these knives on the plane? Uh, he is the worst character, even when he is the man in black, when season six just murders all the people. All the people wow. are in black. The worst. So not only are our two competitors saying that they have the better choice, they're also saying that the opponent's choice is the worst character on the show. Steve, I want to go back to you for your final thought. And before you give us your final thought, I'm, I'm going to give you the floor just for a little bit to kind of recap your first argument that the folks joining this new stream maybe didn't get a chance to catch. So as quick as you can. You know, I mean, I guess I, there's only one thing that I want to say about Kate is uh, she, I, I love that she she like killed her stepdad thinking that that was going to like make everything good. And then it like ruined her mom's life. <laughs> so she like ruined her mom's life. And also one last thing about Locke. Um, the first thing he does when he discovers that he's able to walk again after crashing on the island is he's amazed for a moment because he can wiggle his toes and then get up. But then he starts to help people instantly. And Kate's just like, I don't know. She's just like over off to the side, kind of doing her own thing. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> Roxy, come get your girl. Kate decides to go on a massive hike to the radio tower to get them off the island. She goes to the smoke monster through it multiple times and is not afraid. Yes, Locke helps. So does Boone. Is that a point in his favor? Absolutely not. Kate is way more helpful. And she is somebody who's trying to get food, trying to get them safety, not afraid of anything. Uh, and Locke just goes off by himself. He's a solo dolo loser. That's uh, Locke's right. He's a loser. Locke's the reason why they get to eat. Hearts? For Steve, get those last few <laughs> votes in. The, the chat has a lot to say. And before we get to whether it's Kate or whether it's Locke, Frank Morris chimes in and says, Mr. Echo and Desmond and Hurley are Frank's favorite character. So there's a lot of characters to choose from. And there's a lot of different ways you can go with this very open-ended best character question. Jennifer Javons chimes in and says, Kate, but then there's a questionable emoji and I don't speak hieroglyphics, <laughs> so I'm not sure if she's actually rooting for Kate or if she's actually weeping because somebody said Kate. But I will tell you that Sean Toy says that Locke is the best character. And so we're finally tabulating the votes. And I can say with some confidence that Steve Zaragoza has gone up early and he has cut the champion, the I'm returning for you, Roxy. champion, Roxy Stryer. Steve is up one to nothing. So, Steve, congratulations on your very first real round win here in Binge Battle. Thank you. I just want to say, I just want to thank the Academy. I want to thank God. I want to thank my family. Just you and, wait. Just you wait. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Might be the same mistake that Lon Harris made last week where you get a little too excited winning one <laughs> round. So it's a tactic of here mine. we go. Everybody Marcus wins. Stryer versus Steve Zaragoza in round number two. And round number two, your most heartbreaking death. Okay, Rox, you're going to kick this round off with about a minute. Which one hit you the most? This is the easiest question I've ever been asked in my entire life because this is not just the most heartbreaking death of this show. This is the most heartbreaking death that has ever been seen on TV. And that, of course, is the death of Charlie. If you even have reference to this show, if you've never seen an episode, but you know somebody who watched the show, you know not Penny's boat with the hand. You know that imagery because it was so crushing to watch him go down to drown while still being the good guy he was in his soul and telling Desmond the heartbreaking truth talk about a heartbreaking moment Desmond is heartbroken Charlie is heartbroken we all know that Desmond said, Charlie, this is exactly how you're going to die, yet he does it anyway. He knows he's going to go in there and die, and he does it freaking anyway. Good vibrations. Uh, that's something that only a musician could do. We figure out why it has to be Charlie, and that was gut-wrenching too because everything he's loved his whole life, everything he's worked for, that is what end ends up being his demise, uh, and he became one of the fan favorites. So Charlie leaving the show, him dying through the looking glass, without a doubt the most heartbreaking death okay roxy stryer showing y'all why she is the returning champion uh kevin cardona chimes in and says sorry steve charlie's death and lost is whatever you say is gonna lose because that death was just that powerful but steve it is your minute so tell us what was your most heartbreaking moment charlie's death was very sad it's true it affected me in an emotional way and it sucked but the most heartbreaking death was truly Jin and Son. Like, without a doubt. Because Charlie was like... Charlie did everything he needed to do, and uh, he was very helpful and he was great, and I love his dynamic with Hurley, and he's a great character. But Jin and Son, they have such a complete arc of being the argumentative couple that, you know, argued about this and that, and at first you're like, man, Jin's a jerk. I don't like this guy. Then they completely change they they grow and then they're separated and then son has a baby which jin never gets to meet by the way which is so heartbreaking and then jin goes back in time and freaking son doesn't and then son spends like the rest of the series trying to get back to to, to jin and then finally when she does they literally die together and it's so heartbreaking because of how hard she tried to find her husband. And they just die in such a heartbreaking, tragic way in that submarine. And truly, 
it's just you think about that baby that's never going to meet her dad that's just going to live without parents it's so heartbreaking Okay, so Steve, I'm going to stick with you for your 30 second rebuttal before I go back to Roxy Stryer. So you're saying basically both moments are really heartbreaking, but you're just weighing the child versus the relationship as the clincher in your argument. I think it's the clincher. There's certainly some, there's a lot of things that lead to that, but the clincher is certainly that they've left that baby that Jin will never meet. Okay, so Roxy Stryer, now it's on you. I'm seeing uh, Kelly Nichols has a great comment. She says, okay, but Juliet too. So yeah. she can't decide between Charlie and Juliet. And so it seems like she might be hitting the thumbs up to vote for Roxy. But if you think that Steve's right, click that heart. Roxy, 30 second rebuttal is now yours. Let's be honest though, and this might say something about who I am. Jin and Son's death was actually kind of beautiful because he does not have to stay there. He was able to leave. And if he had wanted to choose to leave, to go live his life, be with the baby, whatever he needed to do, but she was stuck and he decided, I'm going to stay here with you because I'm not leaving you. That was a choice that he made to be with her. And at the end of the day, the show was ending and that was such a beautiful way to wrap out their love and to wrap out their characters on the show. After Charlie died, we just kept living life missing Charlie. There was just no more Charlie on the show. And so the fact that we didn't get him and he had this gut-wrenching death that was completely selfless, uh, that had nothing to do with his own love. He, he died because he was trying to save people and unjam the system. Uh, that's the word heartbreaking. It wasn't beautiful. It was gut-wrenchingly heartbreaking. Yeah, okay, maybe it is better to die at the end of something than it is to die in the middle of something. Steve, uh, your last phrase to get all the hearts you can voting for you. Charlie almost died like seven times on the show before he actually died. And as a matter of fact, that character was prepared to die and actually wanted to die quite a few times. And so you were set to for that character to die, essentially. You were just waiting for it to happen. With Jin and Son, they had so much left to do. And by the time they died in the series, you were just like, okay, well, no one's safe. Because Charlie, they hinted at his death a lot. Jin and Son were like, these they've got plot armor. They're going to be fine. It, it, just, it, it just made the show so shocking at that point because it was like, okay, all bets are off. Anybody can die, and I'm, I'm in. It's, it's an argument that is echoed by a commenter, uh, Daniel Edwater Escalante says, we knew Charlie was dying since Desmond mentioned it, so it wasn't as surprising. So, Roxy, it may not have been as surprising, but no less emotional for you. Last word in the argument is yours. Listen, Jin we legitimately thought was dead because we watched him explode. So we already had made our peace with that. In an episode where Saeed, Bernard, and Jin, we think that they're all shot. Hurley kills people with a van. Sawyer ends up killing somebody. Locke kills Naomi. The one thing that's talked about is not Penny's boat. That's the one thing that's talked about from that episode in which everything happened. So it's got to be Charlie's death. All right. Well, I think some of our chat room is traumatized, too, because I'm just looking at Darren Hicks's comment. He says, I love you, Steve, but I'm with Roxy on this one. So it is a very close race here to monitor. And I love Degobot has been chatting a lot. Dego clearly a huge fan of Lost and Degobot saying that people in real life have uh, Penny's boat tattooed somewhere on their body. And I think that that's a pretty strong statement. And with that, Roxy Stryer has gotten a little more likes than Steve did hearts, meaning Roxy has tied the score at one apiece. And we go to round number three here in Binge Battle, deadlocked at one to one. The comments are now flying off the charts. Now that everybody is here in the new chat room. Welcome. Latecomers, you're here, and it's tied, and round three is the all-time best episode. So, Roxy, you have all the momentum right now. You are the returning champion, and the opening minute for the all-time best episode goes to you. Which one are you going to pick? So many incredible episodes, but of course, because I'm somebody who plays by all the rules, a lot of those episodes are two-parters. You know, the pilot is really two episodes. Through the Looking Glass is really two episodes. So I thought, what is the best standalone episode of the series? And it has to be The Constant. Now, this is an episode of TV that really plays out like a movie, and you could show this to somebody who doesn't even watch the show, and they would say this is one of the top five episodes of television 
of all time. Desmond, who is a fan favorite, which we already learned from you guys in the chat when we didn't pick him to argue for best character. He is very focused and centered in this episode. It's a beautiful love story about him and Penny. It's also a Christmas episode, which it gets left off of Christmas uh, lists because people don't acknowledge that he says he's not going to call her for eight years. Eight years! She will not hear from him and she just has to keep the same number. She has to keep the hope and then in 2004 on December 24th he's going to call her. I mean, who listens to that? But they're so in love that she does and he does and Saeed is an incredible friend here. We learn about this time travel. We get to see more about Desmond's past life and learn what happened with him and Penny, which we had so many questions about. It's a beautiful, perfect episode of television that is the best of Lost and one of the best of all time. Okay, Steve, we had time travel, love, the holidays, and most incredible of all, remembering someone's phone number. Hey, remember when we all had to do that, kid? Steve Zaragoza, you get a minute to counter. What's your best episode? Listen, The Constant is a fantastic episode, and if we could both choose The Constant, I'm sure it would have been a less entertaining battle. But And it's really hard to pick the best episode in the whole show. Um, but I don't want to go with what TV Guide thinks is the greatest episode of the show because The Constant is a fantastic episode. But anytime you look up what the best episode of, of Lost is, The Constant is super high up there. And it's like, yeah, there's something for everybody. There's a great romance story. Desmond and Penny's relationship is legendary. I love the show. I won't argue that. Um, but for me... By the time we got to the constant, even though it is a fucking, I'm sorry, I shouldn't curse. Can I curse? I want to say the F word again. <laughs> um, listen, the point I'm trying to make is, is that it's a great episode, but for me, Man of Science, Man of Faith is maybe just the greatest episode of a TV show ever. It's the second, it's the first episode of the second season. It opens with Desmond in the hatch, getting ready. He's like making breakfast and he's on an exercise bike. And he's like, what is this? What is this show? What is happening? We waited like 200 days for this episode. What's in the hatch. We finally get to see what's in the hatch and it's done perfectly. The, the Mama Cass song, the, uh, the, the, I mean, introduction of Desmond, um, it's just, it just went full sci-fi too. And that was the, that was the greatest thing about it. It went full. It's when Lost went full sci-fi. It was before it was like, this could be ghosts. This could be dinosaurs. This could be polar bears. But now it's like, okay, we're it, anything could happen on this Island. There could be a hatch with a shower and a food cabinet and, and washer dryer and guns and a really cool like mural. It's just an undoubtedly amazing episode of the show. And the, and my favorite absolute. Yeah, I, I see a lot of people that were initially saying that there's no way that you can argue against any episode that is not named The Constant, but Steve's starting to win some hearts over Roxy's leg. So if you think Steve had the better argument so far, click with your heart. If you think Roxy has the stronger episode, click with your thumbs. Roxy, I, I want to go back to you because it seems like Steve maybe has the best hook episode where it's like, what the hell is in this thing? And that was the episode, honestly, that got me into Lost. But you're talking about the episode that really resonated with you the most emotionally. So it's a good back and forth. Another 30 seconds for your rebuttal. Yeah, listen, Man of Science, Man of Faith, great episode. Can't say it's not. But we've waited all this time. What's in the hatch? What's in the hatch? And we're on a sci-fi show. And what's in the hatch is a person. You know, that, and that's fine. And Desmond ends up being one of the best characters, but we open the hatch and it's a person. That's not, that's not insane. It's not out of the realm of possibility. You're not explaining the smoke monster to me. There's not a polar bear down there. It's a human being. And not only is it a human being, but it's a human being that we know. And so the threat is kind of taken away here because Jack and Desmond have known each other from off the island. Uh, they had that experience together when they were running stadiums and Desmond helped Jack. So we know Desmond's actually a decent person. So I don't feel threatened by the situation when we're down there. So the stakes aren't quite as high. Although it's a great episode, it just didn't elevate the show for me. Okay, Steve, what about... That episode, Man of Science, Man of Faith, which, by the way, faith is an F word you can say on this show. <laughs> Did you find that elevated the show to you? I have a dirty mouth. Um, listen, like I said, it's very hard to choose the best episode of this series. 
I, I just had to pick the one that resonated the most emotionally with me. Desmond and Penny's relationship was fantastic. The fact that they got that phone call tugs at my heartstrings. It makes me sad. It makes me cry. But truly that moment in the episode is what makes that episode so good. And that's just one moment. And it is a great episode. Again, I'm not arguing that. But on a man, man of science, man of faith, there are so many things that happen. It opens up so many possibilities. You know, the 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 movie, you know, the film, the film, the Dharma Swan Hatch movie, the magnetism, the numbers, you know, it just it, it just it's such a perfect episode. There's so many things that happen. And in the constant, it's like the phone call is the moment you remember. And in Man of Science, Man of Faith, there's just too many things to to zero in on. All right. Uh, the last word pretty much we got from Steve Zaragoza. So, Roxy, going to give you one last 10-second phrasing to give us why the constant should win. It's not just the phone call. It's Daniel Faraday and having to figure out about the mouse and going back uh, and learning more about all of our characters. And funny enough, this really is an episode about science and faith because what's happening is unexplainable, but there's a scientific aspect to it. So uh, it, it really embodies this show and also standalone. Works for the show and is standalone. All right. Well, it, David Barber is our first commenter I want to highlight. Says, I don't think that uh, Man of Science, Man of Faith comes close to the constant. And then Lucy Fitzgerald counters saying that she just simply thinks Steve wins. Um, Cody Campbell just wants everybody to know that Lost is the best show, period. So thank you, Cody. You have definitely tuned in to the right live stream, but we can only have one winner. You voted with your hearts. You voted with your heads, with your thumbs up for Roxy, with your hearts for Steve. And the first horse out of the gate doesn't always win the race. Roxy with a huge opening argument that seemed to win over the entire internet, but yet Steve came back methodically and reminded us of the reason why so many people, myself, like I mentioned included, got hooked into this show was what the hell is in the hatch. And what I would consider an upset victory in this round is actually Steve getting the win in round three. And so Steve goes up two to one. Oh, Congratulations. Man. This you was have so the lead over the returning champ. Daggers. It was so hard against the daggers. constant. It was so hard, Roxy. You gotta know. Oh, I don't care about your hard times right now, Steve. <laughs> I'm struggling over here. Don't tell me what I can't do. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Zaragoza trying to pull the upset over our returning champion, Roxy Stryer. Thanks to everybody who is tuned into our new live stream here on Binge Battle, the Lost episode. Make sure that you're following Rotten Tomatoes here on Facebook. Click that like to get involved in all the latest updates. Check out Binge Central, which is our hub for all things streaming right now. We move on to what could be the final round in today's show. And the theme of that round is, drum roll please, the ending. The ending of Lost. Was it good or was it bad? Steve, you got the lead. The momentum's back with you and you kick off round number four. Um, I don't think the ending of Lost was good or bad. I think it was perfect. And for those people that to this day are like, well, they were dead the whole time. You're so wrong and you make me so angry because it's so easy to just pay attention and realize that Jack's dad says everything you need to know. It is really strange and it is a really unique finale to a TV show. And I know it wasn't what everybody was expecting, but I put so much faith in the creators and the writers of the show to do something with this incredible once in a lifetime television experience. I think the fact that everybody who went through an incredible experience together on that island, getting to in getting to meet again in the afterlife because the, it meant so much to them to be together in this incredible time in their lives and then to meet in the afterlife is a beautiful idea. I love that idea that all my friends that I did the coolest stuff with will be in this like middle ground afterlife type place before I get to go to whatever the next place is. I think it's beautiful. I think it's wonderful. I think it's unique and ballsy and different. Another show has never gone there. And I think it's perfect. Okay, so the options were good or bad. And Steve took it one or maybe two notches higher than that, Roxy. He went perfect. How do you respond to the ending of Lost? Listen, it sounds like Steve liked it. And you can't blame somebody for liking something. Folks, in the history 
of athletic competition. The greatest games ever played are the ones that exhausted both competitors to the point where they could barely walk off the playing surface, whether it's a field, whether it's a court, or whether it's a virtual Facebook stream here in Binge Battle. That's what we've discovered here today. I said that the best art is told in trilogies, but now we have a bonus fourth edition. So maybe it's Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but maybe it's like Jurassic World and it just brings us back to the place that we loved in the first place. That is the topic of today's debate because Lost is our show here on Binge Battle and we're tied. Roxy Stryer has two points. So does Steve Zaragoza, her challenger, which means only one thing, overtime. We are now about to enter the overtime round of Binge Battle and the way that we do overtime is simple. It's determined by you, the fans who have now jumped more streams. You've crossed more streams than the Ghostbusters. And thank you for doing so, because now that you're here, you're going to be voting. If you think Roxy has the better overtime argument, click the like button. You're voting with that thumbs up. If you think Steve Zaragoza has the better OT argument, then click the heart. That's the love button. You love Steve. I know you love both of them, but you're going to love Steve or you're going to like Roxy. And that's how we determine a winner here today. So without further ado, our overtime debate topic that will determine the winner of Binge Battle is what is the most shocking moment in the history of Lost. Steve Zaragoza, the brave challenger, ready to step to the plate. What is your answer, sir? These were all very tough, these, these questions. And uh, figuring out what the most shocking moment in Lost was was kind of difficult. But there was one particular episode that came to mind when I thought about the series as a whole and what was most shocking to me. And... It has to be Walkabout, which is episode four of the entire series, season one. And Walkabout is such an important episode of the entire series because it sets the tone for what would make this, the, the entire show so good, which was just the fact that they, whatever you're thinking might happen is not, is never what's going to happen. And the fact that Locke is seen as this badass with knives. And the reason why he has knives is because he was going on a walkabout, which is a normal thing, I guess, <laughs> when you go to a walkabout in Australia. But he, uh, you know, he was just this guy that was like feeding people on the island with boars. And he's just this mysterious guy. And at first you're like, uh oh, he's a knife guy. And he's probably going to be creepy. But then you like see his backstory. And it's so tragic and it's so messed up how he's just this kind of like a uh, bullied, sad man. And then when you see him in a wheelchair, you're just like, wait a minute, what? And then you see the crash flashback and he's wiggling his toes and he just has that moment of like, what is happening? Why can I walk? Why do my legs work? And for me, it was just like, okay, this is my favorite show of all time. I've never seen a series do anything like this. And it's so shocking to me that suddenly this island they're on is what, like a healing island or something? And that's so incredible. That's when the whole series was like, all right, I'm in. I'm locked in. That's for me. All right. That's what shocked Steve. So, Roxy, Steve's saying that the episode that taught us that Locke is a knife guy, and you were about to say, that's not a knife. This is a knife. Your best <laughs> argument for most shocking moment. Listen, I've started every argument that way. Listen, it's because you should listen to this one. Listen, <laughs> here's the deal. If you go to a party and you don't know the theme of the party, you can't be shocked by any theme that you walk in. If it's disco, not shocking. If it's aliens, not shocking because you didn't know the theme. In the first season of a show, you can't really be shocked by anything because you don't know what the show is up to. You don't know what it's capable of. So they had already shown us there's a polar bear. So you're telling me that somebody being in a wheelchair prior to being on the island is shocking. We don't know enough about the show to even know that that's shocking. Here's what's freaking shocking. Here is when not only did you go to a party and it's disco, but now it's three in the morning and all of a sudden they pull the rug out from under you and really you're at a 90s theme party, okay? And that is, of course, we have to go back. We are in season Three. We are at the finale. We have lived an entire life with this show where we have only done flashbacks. And all of a sudden, you want to tell me in the last few moments of this that we are not flashing back anymore. 
we're flashing forward. And now I have to grasp that not only did we get off the island, which I didn't know we did, but they want to go back to the island. What the flipping freak is that? Bomb dropped. They said it would be the moment that changed the show forever, and it did. Okay, well, I, I don't know how Roxy's been spending her nights, but it appears that before quarantine, she was going to a lot of discotheques. It suddenly changed theme at three in the morning. That's shocking. <laughs> it is indeed shocking, as are both of these moments. So y'all picked two winners. There's no doubt about that, but only one can be crowned the victorious argument. So the last word for Steve Zaragoza is what? By the time we got to We Have to Go Back, it is truly a shocking moment, and it was definitely a great moment in the show. But by the time we got to We Have to Go Back, a lot of people had already jumped ship from the show because it was just so convoluted by that point. And I understand that. I don't really agree with that, but I understand that. And I understand by the, by the time we got to Jack's bad beard, his fake beard, We Have to Go Back moment, it's shocking and cool, but... Again, I really think a wheelchair moment sets the tone for that moment, you know? And it's it's more impactful that they have to go back because of how magical the island is. And that's when you really learn that the island has, yeah, sure, it has a monster, a dinosaur, whatever it is that's making all those sounds, the polar bear. It's like, woo, crazy, it's a random island. But when you learn that it healed Locke, then you're like, okay, so this is like, this is a magical island. And that's a okay. very shocking moment for a show. That magical you know island for Steve. So, Roxy Stryer, your final word in the argument that we have to go back. Five words changed the entire show. And the people who had fallen off came back after we have to go back. Why does Jack want to go back and why doesn't Kate? There were so many moments within that one moment. Uh, and yours is a whole episode reveal. We're learning about the walkabout, why he couldn't go. It's not a shocking moment because we build to it. This is a moment that changed TV history. All right. So many great comments coming in from our viewers here on Facebook. Thank you once again for bearing with us and our technical difficulties. And thanks to our incredible tech team here at Rotten Tomatoes for keeping us afloat and really getting us to the island with this crashed airplane. But now that we're here, we can only have one winner. You voted with your thumbs up for Roxy Stryer. You voted with your hearts for Steve. And I'm seeing a lot of shocking moments at fans would say maybe some involving Benjamin Linus or a smoke monster or, yes, a hatch slash polar bear incident. But there can only be one shocking moment and the most shocking moment of Lost declaring the winner of today's binge battle is the first shocking moment that we got on the show, and that would be episode four. Thus, Steve Zaragoza has oh, been snap. the winner. Of Binge Battle, Steve, you are the champion. You have upset Roxy Stryer, who was the returning champion. And now, Steve, you are the champion of Binge Battle. In a few short words, how do you feel? Uh, shocked. <laughs> shocked because Roxy's so right. Um, <laughs> but, again, by that time, the show was really had lost a lot of people. You know, and it was just like, it was shocking, but, man... That walkabout was the tone setter. Yeah, it, it looks like I'm a shocked. lot of people thinking that Roxy's moment may be the most iconic of the entire show, those five words that she mentioned, but it was not the most shocking in terms of the people watching here on Facebook. So, um, Roxy, Steve, I want to thank both of y'all for such a compelling episode of Binge Battle that took about as many twists and turns and shocking moments as the show that we're debating itself, which would be lost. So I do want to give each of y'all a quick platform to let everybody out there who's watching with us know where they can virtually find you and support you and all that you're doing during this quarantine and hopefully after it's over. Roxy, you're up first. Where can the kids check you out? Uh, vengeance will be mine, and I will be back to get my championship because this is the most shocking moment. You guys can find me everywhere at Roxy Stryer and on my own YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Roxy Stryer. Um, I love your competitive spirit, and it fell a little short to Steve Zaragoza's spirited debating here today. Steve Zaragoza, where can all the kids find you out there in the world? 
Uh, you can find me on youtube.com slash the Valley folk. It's my comedy team that we make sketches and fun things with. And also I have a podcast called dynamic banter, which you should check out. We talk about nerdy stuffs on there too. I can say, uh, Steve, one of the uh, funniest guys that you will see on TV or on the interwebs. And I've actually oh. had the pleasure of being invited on live at the Roxy. And it's a great show that Roxy does each and every day. Two of the hardest working people in the industry. And that's coming from a guy who is just looking up at both of them because I take a lot of naps and play a lot of wee golf during my days. And that was before <laughs> quarantine. So thank you, everybody. For tuning in to today's Binge Battle, my name is Mark Ellis. My comedy special, Dog Stepfather, is now available on Amazon Prime if you want to go check that out. I also want to give a huge shout-out to everybody over at Fandango Now. Thank you so much for supplying us with our prizes for everybody that played trivia with us. Remember that way back on the first stream we had? Some people won some delicious prizes from Fandango Now, delicious in the form of content you can watch this evening. And I want to thank everybody out there for watching, not the least of which was our tech team behind the scenes getting us through this storm we made it we're here ashore and i don't think we have to go back to this but maybe to the next binge battle where steve there goes it could be a returning champion and maybe roxy stryer wants to duke it out with him about another show we'll wait for all that to be settled in the meantime for everybody here at rotten tomatoes my name is mark ellis and we'll see you soon <laughs>